What's up guys, it's Trek and today we're doing another Top 5 Friday and we're doing the Top 5 Super Stock Blasters. Now, Super Stock is also sometimes called Sambo. If you have any questions about this, I want to refer you to the SENC and how that works video that's on my vlog channel question mark and you should be able to check it out there it gives you rules for how this goes but the tldr is that super stock wars are stock ammo modified blasters only which means that we're using these guys not these guys these are for nic wars they're small darts also known as stefan's slugs what have you and then these are pulling darts in a variety of flavors that's kush darts action strike darts elite darts uh, min gun darts, waffle darts, etc. and so forth. So, that means that blasters are usually pretty competitive, they can be off the shelf, but let's be real, everybody likes to modify their blasters. So your list might look different than mine. My list is a combination of things that I personally feel are very effective and things that I think are very popular. I have a lifetime of HPZ experience and I host the largest super stock nerf group in the world, which is the SCNC. So I have a really good sample size to draw from, but I want to remind you that we play in a lightly wooded area. That means that we have a little bit of cover and we play outside. So if you play inside, certain things are going to be way more popular. And if you play in close quarters with lots of cover or no cover at all, things will be a little bit different. But with no more talking about kind of what this list is, let's get into the list of the top five best super stock blasters around. Go! Our number five blaster is the long shot. I know you've seen the long shot a lot, but that's because the long shot is really, really popular. So the biggest thing that it has going for it is that there have been so many, it's also the oldest blaster on our list, that it's really easy to thrift. Thrifting is just when you get blasters really, really cheap at thrift stores, yard sales, etc., swap meets, what have you. Now, the long shot has been around so long that you can buy them for about $5 if you're just patient. It has a massive Springer plunger tube and it's so easy to modify that it's really, really popular. And it's still quite competitive. Now, this one is, of course, stock, which means that it's still bolt action, magazine fed, and performance is marginal at best. It doesn't get anywhere close to elite ranges, which means that for modern super stock wars, it's not the greatest, but it makes the list because of what it can become. So pump action modifications with massive spring loads are really, really popular. With those massive spring loads, you get people making everything from CNC to custom build bolt sleds and breeches. You get a lot of really cool stuff. People have grass breached these for a long time. The power in this one is pretty insane. It's luckily got mostly metal internal, so it's very safe. This is, of course, a foregrip. The most popular mod for these since forever has been to turn these into a shotgun primable blaster. That means no moving your hands to get on this bolt. It just bolts through and connects to the original rail up front where that bipod was on the stock blaster. This one's pretty bare bones just to showcase how much power you can put in the internals, but even the Crimson Strike version, which is quite rare at this point, is susceptible to modifications. So another popular mod is to take the stock and add what's known as a stock block, which allows you to get in there and add some incredibly powerful spring loads. This is another Nerfomania style foregrip. They've been injection molded. His are actually heat formed PVC and they have very sturdy polycarbonate arms here. Let's just get a ton of power out of these guys. This one features my battle rifle internals, which is just a fancy way of saying that I used them originally in the Halo 3 battle rifle that I made years and years ago, and they fire stock length darts. Back in the day, they were designed for streamlines, but they actually handle elites way better. So you can get ranges of like 85, 90 feet out of these no problem, which means that they still make the list because they compete with the electronic blasters of today quite handily in terms of not only performance, but they also have fine rate of fire in semi-auto just by pumping. So, number four on our list is a shared spot. It's half Chaos, half Zeus. More specifically, the Hurricane. Now, some people do use the Zeus to great effect with the 12-rounders, but most rock it with a blower fan on top. Now, these are sharing a spot because they're really not as popular as they could be. I suspect that as time goes on, as they get better, I think, like the Nemesis, that they will continue to see more and more use. That's because the ammo is really efficient in terms of how much of it you can store and how easily you can load it. 40 round magazines for the Chaos are no joke, 100 round Hoppazines for the Nemesis are insane. These get excellent rate of fire and I've lumped them all together because they're all equally kind of popular, all of the different rival flywheel builds and they all perform roughly the same. Most people use either Hurricanes or Chaosies right now holding either 100 rounds or about 80. 
with their chaos in two magazines usually, but they're very effective and the reason that they're not quite as popular as they could be is twofold. One, we're talking about predominantly HVZ and the SE and C, which are both played outside. Rival rounds are still like a quarter a piece in a lot of places, which means most people aren't willing to like throw that kind of ammo around. Back in the day when we used to play HVZ, all ammo was like a quarter a piece, but with the advent of coup starts and things like bow berries, Ammo is cheap, and so people aren't used to throwing quarters at zombies anymore. Now, at the SCNC, we have a really good recovery rate and a bit of about a thousand rival rounds that we all share, so they're getting more and more popular each month. But I think that with the advent of the Nemesis in particular, they're going to continue to get way more popular because this is pretty difficult to argue with. Nemesing. Menacing. Menacing. I'm not funny. On to number three. Number three on our list is the Nerf Rapid Strike, but not like this. Oh yeah, that's more like it. So, the stock Rapid Strike we all know is pretty much garbage. It shoots very slow compared to the modern Hyper Fire, and it really isn't that awesome. Like, the slow rate of fire and the slightly sub-elite performance means that it's just not that great. However, modified properly and firing off of a LiPo pack, the Rapid Strike becomes a terror on the battlefield. So, why isn't it number one, especially if it is the number one flywheel blaster for full auto of all time? Well, it's not number one because frankly most people don't use them well, nor do they get modified well most of the time. Now that's not me being a mod elitist or anything. Get it? Elitist? Most people just don't have the time or the materials or the patience to get a proper three switch setup installed into these guys. With a proper three switch setup, they're insane. They allow you to control your ammo and fire properly, but if improperly modded while the performance is aces, you just dump all of your ammo way, way too fast. So, unless you're carrying also a full rig with excess of 100, 200 rounds, you're really just not doing yourself that much of a service. Instead of having a full auto primary, most people wind up having 12 or 18 round burst primaries. That's not the same. I promise, it's very, very different and nowhere near as effective. When they're modified like the Nosferatu or many of Bobo's monsters, or even the, the Regent, which I don't think you guys have seen yet, but you will soon, uh, they become very, very efficient, very powerful blasters, and that's why they're number three. A well-modded rapid strike used by somebody who actually has some trigger discipline is a scary thing. However, nowhere near as scary as the number two blaster on our list. That's right, it looks rather innocuous, doesn't it? But let me tell you, this thing deals death. Get it? Because it's the death dealer? Well, as the saying goes, beware the man with only one gun, the Alpha Trooper becomes the epitome for that. For a lot of players of both HVZ, i.e. poor college students, and uh, super stock players, particularly at the SENC, we have a lot of players whose only blaster is really like an EAT and some magazines and maybe a Rampage as a backup. And that says a lot, like when you become almost married to your primary, and again, that's why this ranks so highly, not only because many players are like this, but also because I personally and like this, but if you become really, really good with whatever it is you play with, and for many players, it's the Elite Alpha Trooper, you become quite dangerous. While the performance is not nearly as high as, say, a modified long shot, and the rate of fire is nowhere near that of a strike, the combination of a very reliable Springer primary that has all of the best features, such as pump action, slam fire, and it magazine loads from the rear, not from the side, has a rail for optics, and has the ability to take any stock attachment point, gives you a primary that's just incredibly reliable. And I think I've already said reliable, but I don't think that it matters so much, because if you ask anybody who's an enthusiast of firearms in any arena, paintball, airsoft, real steel, etc., reliability is often the most important factor for them. And that's what the EAT delivers. It gives you consistent shots in a very tight grouping at a relatively consistent rate of fire, depending upon you, and it lets you get really, really familiar with it. Plus, it's dirt cheap. It cost 20 United States dollars when it first came out, and it actually is one of very few blasters that came out on sale. Don't ask. Uh, but we've had a lot of time to get used to it because it's an exact clone with better performance of the original Alpha Trooper, which was an in-strike blaster. Those are the neon yellow ones for you newbies. No worries. So the blaster's history, and admittedly my personal proficiency with it, gets it a very high ranking on this chart, but it's solid. 
it's awesome, it's a joy to use, and it really doesn't cost you that much to get started. So the Elite Alpha Trooper, ladies and gentlemen, are number two, but as much as it pains me, one thing is more popular and sees more play than even the Mighty Alpha Trooper. It's not quite as reliable, but a well-modded one is awesome. Gee, what popular blaster hasn't he mentioned yet? I bet it's the Sentinel. <laughs> is the Strife, obviously. Coming in at 20 United States dollars, the Strife is also very cheap and incredibly versatile. Has all of the things, maybe not this one, that make the M-Strike platform great in electronic form. It can be an incredibly compact sidearm pseudo primary with literally hundreds of dollars worth of work and skill in it to make something incredibly performance focused along with beauty, or it can be something incredibly tactical both in form and function, in either compact or rifle-sized flavors. It's really like a catch-all platform because all it is is a very simple semi-auto flywheel mechanism. One pull of the trigger while revving allows you to deliver one dart downrange in elite ranges. It has a small flywheel cage that's very close to its trigger assembly and a battery pouch that stands outside of the blaster. That's to say that it's asymmetrical. It's easy to expand with 3D printed parts and there's hundreds of different kit combinations and varieties of stocks and barrel attachments that you can throw onto it. This one's decked out to the nines, but they can be as simple as just gluing nonsense to it. This one costs virtually nothing to make. These are leftover parts. The difference in performance between these two is really only like 20, 25 FPS, and that's because even using the most basic of materials in a simple rewire, the Strife becomes a very reliable semi-auto flywheel blaster. It's far more reliable than the Rapid Strike and almost as reliable as a Springer because as long as the flywheels are revving, the trigger does a really good job of shoving something into it. Again, assuming that you're using full-length darts. But the Strife is incredibly popular. It's sold a ton of units. It has plenty of kits coming out, even still for it. And we just really, really hope that it doesn't disappear from shelves anytime soon. But with the most aftermarket parts available than any other blaster out there, I think that the Strike is easily the most popular super stock blaster out there, especially for humans versus zombies players, and even at the SCNC where we have a ton of Springers only players. It's pretty sweet. Also, just a quick note on availability, and I will be asking at Toy Fair this year, and I hope that the Strike isn't going anywhere anytime soon, but uh, if you happen to see one on the shelves at retail, I recommend storing a few of them, just because the kits are sweet and uh, we nothing good lasts forever, I suppose. I will be asking about it at Toy Fair. You can currently purchase them on Amazon. I'll put a link in the description box below, but I think that they're a little bit inflated on Amazon right now, and I would much rather you guys get a good deal at retail. So that is our list. I think that all the blasters are awesome. I use all of them personally, and I think that they're all very effective and they even have like slight advantages against one another, which is pretty cool. So the, the balancing pentagon there is something that you guys can debate in the comment section till kingdom come, and I'm sure that will happen no matter what I say right now. But thank you very much for watching. If you'd like more top five goodness, there's a playlist also linked somewhere around here. Much love, Nerf on, Drag out.